Hey guys, Mr. Decker here. This is lesson 17 of the Express course, Functions with Harvester. So in our last lesson, we worked on functions with Minecraft. Now we're doing it with the Harvester. It's the little farmer lady. So let's jump in here. Let's get into the standards and uh, get to work, shall we? Compare and refine multiple algorithms for the same task and determine which is the most appropriate, and decompose or break down problems into smaller manageable subproblems to facilitate the program development process. Our central question for this lesson is, what makes you realize a function could help your program? Well, typically functions are there to simplify your program. So you create a function ahead of time when you know you need your program to run a certain way, and that saves you time on the back end when you're you know, building out your program so that you can just use one piece of code as your function and throw that into the mix instead of recreating all of the code that would go into that function over and over and over again. It simplifies the program makes the program uh, a little quicker to make, a little easier to make. Uh, this entire lesson is on code.org. Make sure you're signed in on code.org with your school Google account. Your grade for this lesson will be based on your programming in the lesson on code.org. Remember that watching the video that you're already watching is mandatory. So watch this video as you work your way through the lesson. Best practice as is usual, uh, watch me do the step pause the video, then complete the step when you need that level of help. When you're finished with the lesson on code.org, answer the essential question as a text box entry. Uh, steps to complete this process are below, right here. All right? Uh, and then again, the essential question, steps for answering it, right there. So let's go ahead, head over to the Express course. At this point, guys, you're, you're teenagers, you're... Uh, young adults at this point, you should be able to navigate code.org. This is the 17th time you've done it. So, you know, you should be able to get here without me, you know, giving you the instructions on how to do it. If you do need those instructions, go to a prior video that I've made. You'll find them there. All right, let's watch. This is the harvester. She runs a big farm and needs your help to pick the crops that are ready to be harvested. Use the move and turn blocks to get the harvester from crop to crop. Then use the pick blocks to collect all of the corn, lettuce, and pumpkins. The bottom right corner will show you how many are available at that spot. If you see more than one, you'll need to pick the crops multiple times in the same square. Keep an eye out for sprouts. You won't know what crop those are or how many there are until the program is run. So your code may need to check what kind of crop is there before picking it. The sun is shining and it's time to harvest. Let us get started. She really loves the puns, all right. Do, 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 do. Have we met before? I'm the harvester. Yes, we have met before. We did a whole lesson with you. Uh, help the harvester get to the pumpkin and pick it. All right. So this time it's set up a little differently, right? We've got a toolbox and we've got drawers to look through to find the code that we want to use over here. So you just click, it opens it up. You see the code that's in it. You use it. You're good. Okay. Help the harvester get to the pumpkin and pick it. So repeat until there are pumpkins. And uh, we're going to move forward with that. And then when she gets to the pumpkin, we want her to pick it. Pick the pumpkin. Run. <laughs> Most excellent. All right, bubble three. Oh, veggies are cropping up everywhere. All right, so whatever that is, corn, whatever that is, corn and pumpkin. So um, 
we've got a function down here in the workspace. This is check square for corn. If there is corn, do pick corn. So we've got a conditional inside our function. Um, workspace, eight blocks, and we're already using four apparently. Okay, let's see. So when we run this, Let's see. When we run this, we want it to pick everything, but we I don't know if we know what these are yet. But we need to use that repeat until we see that there's a pumpkin, I believe. So into the conditionals drawer, repeat until there's a pumpkin. Um, hmm. We probably want conditionals in here. If there is corn, well, we I think we have to keep this function in. I don't know. Hmm. I'm going to build a new function. So let's go into functions, do something, and actions, pick corn. And we're going to go to functions and grab the do something, put that there, and else move forward. And then at the end, pick the pumpkin. So actions, pick pumpkin. So we're going to repeat until there's a pumpkin. If there is corn, do do something. And, and the do something is going to pick corn. Else, move forward. And then at the end, pick the pumpkin. Let's see. <laughs> kind of lucked out there because it ended up that everything was corn. So that's good. All right. And we did it in seven lines of code, it said. So that's pretty good. All right. Bubble four. All right. On bubble four, we've got another function already set up for us that says check square for corn. If there is corn, pick corn. All right. Um, so now to get this set up the way we need it to be, Let's go into loops and let's grab uh, repeat until pumpkins do. And let's make another function. Why not? So let's grab a do something and put this in here. And then conditionals again. If there is corn, do else. The else we want to be a move forward. And the do check square for corn. And then outside of that, um, pick pumpkin. Where's that? There it is. Pick pumpkin. All right, so we've got two functions to use. We've got do something and check square for corn. So let's go ahead and grab do something. And then let's build this out a little ways. Let's see, how do we need to build this out? Hmm. Um, so She's got to go pick corn, pick corn, pick corn, get to the pumpkin. So that runs that loop. And then I would need her to turn left and go forward. So actions, turn left. And then she needs to move forward twice. And then turn left, 
right? Because she's going to be right here. I need her to turn left again and then run the do something code again. That gets us to 16 blocks. Let's see if it works. Awesome. Let's continue. Bubble five. I feel so functional. Now there are multiple pumpkins in each patch. Look carefully at the function definitions below to figure out how to use each one. Each sprout will either grow one corn or nothing. Okay. So these sprouts might grow one corn or nothing. So we've got two functions over here and I can't see them very well. So I'm going to bring them up so I can see them better. Um, this one, get all pumpkins. While there are pumpkins, do pick pumpkin. And this one, check square for corn. If there is corn, pick corn. Okay. So let's go into... Hmm. Let's make another function. Do something function. We'll put that there. And let's go into loops. And we're going to grab repeat until there are pumpkins due. And inside of that, we'll want to Let's see. Uh, we need a conditional inside that, I believe. If there is corn, do else. And then inside of that, we need some action items or maybe a function. Yeah, let's put one of the existing functions in there check square for corn, and then move forward. So we did need an action item after all in there. Um, now what? Let's see, how do we want to build this out? Let's go get the conditionals. What do we have? OK. Let's add more to this function. Let's move these guys over a little further. And I think I need to add another conditional to this. So if there are pumpkins, pick pumpkin, right? And then we need to add another function to this, get all pumpkins. So now I think we might be ready. Because she's got to get here, turn left, go up, turn left while picking corn that may or may not be there. And there are a number of pumpkins here. So that's why that get all pumpkins is important. So let's go in here, functions, do something. And then that'll run this code. Let's see. And then she needs to turn left. And move forward, move forward. And then turn left again. And then I think run the do something code again. Let's see.
I'm not fully convinced this will work, but it could. I don't know if I like this one. So let's create a new function. Uh, do something. Um, let's pull this out of here. Actions, pick corn. I'm going to, yeah, do something too. That's fine. It just needed to be named something different. Um, and functions, get all pumpkins right here. Because that runs that code. Let's see. Hmm, thinking, thinking, thinking. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Get all pumpkins, get all pumpkins. I'm gonna grab that, put this back on here. Uh, I think functions do something again. And then run the get all pumpkins again. I'm getting, maybe I'm thinking too much about this. Let's see. Hmm, sorry, bear with me, guys. I'm thinking about it. I'm working on it. Let me run it from here and see what happens. <coughs> Nothing. Okay. Um, give me a second. We'll we'll think on this. All right. I I think I hardcore. Uh, overthought this. So I'm going to start over completely. To do that, you just hit the start over button right here. And then start over. Okay, so I'm going to grab these functions and pull them back up here so I can see them better. And let's build this code out. So I think I've got it pretty well nailed down. So the first thing we want to do is grab a repeat until uh, there are pumpkins. And then inside that, move forward and check square for corn so that it runs that. Then we're going to get all pumpkins functions. So now we've run her to here. Then we need to turn left. Move forward, move forward. Turn left again. That collects this corn, collects as many pumpkins as may be there. Turn left, move forward, move forward, turn left. So now she's facing this. And we basically just need to repeat this code right here. So um, conditionals, repeat until there are pumpkins. Do, move forward. Uh, let's see, functions, check square for corn, get all pumpkins. That should do it. All right, let's head on to the next one, continue. Bubble six. Great. Try your functions out on a longer path. Oh, okay. Well, we, we struggled with that last one. So let's see if we can do 
this one function and function. Let's pull them up here so we can see them better. And let's go ahead and start building here. We've got repeat until there are pumpkins. And that's under conditionals. And we're going to move forward. And while we're moving forward, we're going to check squares for corn. Then after that, we're going to use the get all pumpkins block to run this function. Then that gets her here. So we need to do that turn left, move forward, move forward, turn, turn left sequence. And then I think we'll repeat what we have here. So uh, conditionals, repeat until there, pumpkins, move forward, check square for corn, get all pumpkins. And then we need to Let's see. <laughs> uh, move forward one time. That'll get her to right here. And then she needs to turn right. And then I think we're just repeating this code again. So uh, conditionals, repeat until there are pumpkins. Move forward. Check square for corn. And then get all pumpkins and that gets us to our 25 limit. Let's run. All righty. That was a success. So now it's making a little more sense. I'm not overcomplicating it anymore. All right, let's see. Did you notice that there was a lot of repeated code in that puzzle? We can save space by calling that code pick along path and using a new function to call the other functions. Use pick along path to solve this puzzle again using fewer blocks. Okay. We can do that. It keeps putting these functions way down here. All right. So now we've got this new function, pick along path, where it repeats until there are pumpkins, checks the square for corn, moves forward, and then gets all the pumpkins. That's good because we've been repeating that a bunch. Okay, so first thing, functions, pick along path, and then that'll get her here and picking, and then she needs to do that turn left, move forward, move forward, turn left sequence. That gets that. And then we need to run another pick along path. And move forward, turn right. So, because so, that gets her right here, needs to move forward, turn right. And then pick along path up to the top. And that's the last block I'll use. That uses all of my resources. Let's run. Sweet. All right. Now I think 
I'm understanding a little better. Functions. If already learned to use and edit functions as a part of an efficient program, now let's learn how to create and use a function from scratch. To do this, look for the category called functions in the toolbox. Here, you'll see a block called do something. Drag that block out into your workspace and rename it to something new that better describes what your function will do. I'm calling this one make a square. From here, you can drag blocks into the function to specify what you want to happen when the function is used. With our function created, you can see that a new make a square block appears under the functions label in the toolbox so that we can actually use or call our create function from our program. This is an important step that's easy to forget. Okay, time to continue on and get creative with your own functions. All right, let's, whoops, let's continue on to bubble nine here. And let's see. So functions let us do more with this with less work. I love the puns. Create a function that sends the harvester down a square path to pick a single head of lettuce from the middle of each row. Okay, so we need to create a function this time. We've done that already. Um, so we need to move forward, pick lettuce, move forward, turn right. All right, so let's go into actions, move forward, pick lettuce, um, move forward and then turn right. That's what I said, I believe. And so now I can repeat this four times to get her all the way around picking the lettuce and doing her thing. All right. Let's see. Repeat four times. So that's going to be under loops. Yeah. Goodness gracious. All right. There we go. Repeat four times and green our the functions do something is the name of our function. So there we go. Success. Let's continue on to bubble 10. All right. So bubble 10, it gets a little more complicated here. Try writing your function again. Is it still helpful? Can you, how can you make it work for this puzzle? All right, so functions do something. This time I'm gonna name it though, let us square. And let's put some actions in here. We need to move forward and then pick lettuce and then move forward and then turn right. And then I'm going to use a loop, repeat, and we're going to probably have to nest a loop. So let's grab another repeat. And that one will be four times. And let's see, we're going to use our function that we made. Functions, let us square, pop that in there. And then once it runs, that it needs to turn right before it goes back up and runs it again. That works. Let's continue on to bubble 11. All right. This one says, this puzzle is amazing. Is your function still helpful for this puzzle? I don't know, let's find out. So functions, let's make one. We'll call it lettuce square again. Oop. And let's make it the same thing. So action, move forward. 
Um, actually, let's use a, let's trash that. Let's use a repeat block. So loop, repeat. We're going to run that four times. And just a second, I'm getting a phone call. All right, sorry about that. We're back to it. Uh, let's jump back in. We got to throw some actions here, move forward, and then uh, pick lettuce, move forward, and turn right. And then uh, we need to build out our win run. So what the computer is going to run the program as. So first thing, it needs to run the function, let us square. And then it's going to turn right. And then run let us square again. And then we've got some complicated movement we've got to do now. So we're going to have to figure out where that gets us gets us here. So now, actions, we need to turn right, turn right. I keep losing track of where turn right is. All right, move forward, move forward. Turn left. And then... We're going to run the function again, let us square. Let's continue. All right, bubble 12. Oh, a challenge. These have all already been challenging. Okay. Okay. Lots of functions this time. Challenge, use everything that you've learned so far to solve this puzzle in 19 blocks or less, and we've already used 12. Function, function, I just need to be able to see them all. Okay. Whew. Okay, so she's here. Probably going to end right there. Hmm. Let me think, and I'll, let me go do some thinking. All right, all right, so we are going to have to make a new function. We've got pick a long path. We've used that before. Check square for corn. We've used that before, and get all pumpkins. So new function. And let's call this one pumpkin square. And because we need her to do that. And we're going to do a repeat four times inside this. And then we're going to use a function inside that, pick a long path, and then turn right. And then over here, I think we're ready to put this together. So let's do functions, pumpkin square. Then we're going to turn right and then run pumpkin square again. And I think that's it. <laughs> Sweet. All right. On to bubble 13. Solve this puzzle in 23 blocks or less. We've already got two functions that we immediately need to move. That's getting annoying. Um, let's see. Woof. Let me, uh, let me pause this and think about it. Okay. All right. So... These functions are here. 
Um, but you know what? Let's I'll throw that away. Yeah, cool. Okay, I'm going to start fresh, make my own functions. And then I think I'm going to need two of them. Because she's got quite an interesting route to run here. She's going to have to do this route. So let's call this one corn rectangle. And lettuce zig zag. All right, so let's work on corn rectangle first. That's this part. Because it's a little less complicated. Let's grab a loop, repeat four times. I don't actually like pull this back this way. And I need a while path ahead. There is one, good. And inside the while path ahead, we're going to move forward and use a conditional if there is corn, pick corn. All right. So if path ahead, so she's going to travel, if there's corn, pick corn, and then she needs to turn left. So that's my corn rectangle. Now let's get the lettuce zigzag put together. That's this one that'll run that and then zigzag again. So I need to use the zigzag then corn rectangle, then zigzag, and that should do it, just using the two functions. All right, this might get a little bit hinky. Let's see. Uh, I need a repeat two times. And let's put some actions in here because she needs to move forward then turn right. Then move forward again to get it right there. Then turn left. And then uh, I need a conditional. While there is lettuce, pick lettuce. And that, I think, will get it. Let's see, I need to do zig zigzag, then corn rectangle, and then she needs to let us zigzag again. Run. I think it'll work. It's working. It's working. Oh, yeah. All right, continue. Bubble 14 now. Whew. Okay. My brain. Okay. Look at the functions defined below. What will the harvester pick? All right. So valid question. Um, let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to get, can I not move the functions? Oh, no. <laughs> this is annoying. All right. I'm going to make this smaller. Zoom out so I can see all of everything here. Apologize to your eyeballs. All right. Look at the functions defined below. What will the harvester pick? The harvester will pick two pumpkins. The harvester will pick all of the pumpkins. The harvester will pick the lettuce. The harvester will pick the corn. Okay. Um, let's think about it for a second. All right, so while path ahead, do check square for corn. So we know it's going to check square for corn. That's this function where it says, if there is corn, pick corn. And then move forward after it checks the space for corn and picks the corn. And then turn right and turn right. So it's going to 
Hmm. And then get produce. And get produce says, repeat until there is lettuce, do, move forward, pick lettuce. So it's going to keep moving forward, I think, whether there's corn there or not. And then turn right, turn right, as long as there's a path ahead, and then get the produce. And get produce says pick the lettuce. Well, it won't get to any corn until down here. Nothing in the code is telling it to pick, get a pumpkin. So A and B are out because there's nothing about pumpkins in the wind run. There is stuff about pumpkins down here, but it's not running that. Uh, the harvester will pick the corn. I don't think it's going to get to the corn based on this. So the only reasonable option then is the pick the lettuce. <laughs> yeah, and that's all she did. So there you go. I was right. Okay, that's it. If you want to do the challenges, that's cool. This has already been a long one and a very challenging one. This is the most challenging one we've done yet, hands down. Whew. Thanks for sticking around with me. That was tough.